Randy Rain here. Back when I was a child, cable TV was a brand new thing. And I can remember getting the cable box and it going on top of the television and then just a whole row of buttons that you went through and pushed. There, there was no remote or anything. You just pushed the buttons for the different channels. And they played movies all the time. And they seemed like it played the same movies a lot. And there was a few of them that are really dear to my heart even today because I saw them as a child such as Smokey and the Bandit. Love that movie. Also, Coal Miner's Daughter, one of my favorite movies of all time. And another one called Dragon Slayer. And I thought that was so cool. Love this movie. And at the time, the dragon was the most realistic looking dragon ever created. And they used a process called go motion instead of stop motion, which gave it motion blur, which made it look a lot more realistic. And in the movie, the little wizard guy had this little necklace that had a gem on it and it glowed and I thought it was so fascinating and I've always wanted to make that little necklace. I finally came up with an idea on how to make it work and how to make it glow and how to hold it in your hands and make it glow and all this stuff. So I'm going to do that now. So I better get started because it's a lot of work. So I was on Thingiverse and did a search and found out someone had already modeled this thing. So I downloaded it and looked at it, and it's not manifold. And if you don't know what that means, a 3D object just needs to be a shell with all the insides completely hollow and everything watertight so that there's no leaks whatsoever. That's what they call manifold, and this thing was nowhere close to that. So I ended up just cutting it in half and cleaning it up and fixing it, and then copying that half, mirror imaging it, and putting it back together. It also has little rings on the ends here that's supposed to tie onto the necklace part, but so I need to change that. So it's not going to be exactly like the Dragon Slayer necklace. And also I'm pretty sure that in the movie it's not as tall and the gem is much bigger, but that's okay. There was also a gap in here, which I couldn't have to get it to light up, so I fixed that part. So I printed out the two pieces, glued them together, started sanding it, and I covered it in CA glue and trying to get the 3D print texture off of it. So now a little bit of the detail is gone, so I'm going to try to add that back. I think that'll be good enough. I am going to spray paint it though. That'll help take away any 3D texture. Smooth it out a little bit. Okay, I think I changed my mind on this right here. It's a little thin. And instead of making a whole new one, I think that'll work better. All right, these little pieces at the end here were, are, were going to be for the wires coming out of this thing, but I've changed my mind. I have a better idea on how to do this, so getting rid of those. I'm going to go ahead and put in some CA glue not to fill it up. Now just clean it out in there.
just using pieces of a toothpick because I need to make some vent holes. And I want to stick it in just enough so it'll hold. I want the silicone to really grab this so when I take the clay out from the other side, it doesn't come with it. It needs to be mostly exposed. And I have to put a little pour spout, just a piece of wood that I sand it down. Now some registration points. Alright, it's time to mold. I'm using my Mold Max 30, which is my go to. So as for the batteries, it's going to be three hearing aid batteries, and they're going to be located in the clasp of the necklace. But I got a lot of cleaning up to do here. Alright, I have some petroleum jelly that I thinned down just with some 3-in-1 oil here. That's going to be my release agent. Okay, time for a quick electronics lesson so you understand what's happening. So take some silica, some sand, and mix something in it that will make it have more electrons than normal. Okay, so when you do that, you have silica with more electrons than protons. That makes it negatively charged. Then take some other silica add in something that gives it more protons than electrons that will make it positively charged. We'll call those P right there. Then connect a wire to each side. You just created a diode which is a one-way valve basically. When you put the correct way electricity will flow. But when you put it the other way it doesn't flow. So it's a one-way valve. So we're not here to talk about diodes, but the next step up, which is transistors. So imagine, instead of two, you had three. You stacked 
a N here and a P here and an N there. And then you add it's a wire here, a wire here, and a wire to there. Or you could stack it up with a P N P like that. That's your two different types of basic transistors. And that's what's inside the little amulet. So, if you put ground here, okay, no ground can go through here until I put a positive charge here. Just a tiny little bit of positive charge here will let a whole bunch of the negative go through. Same way here, if you put a positive charge here, just a little bit of negative charge here allows a whole bunch of positive to go through here. So what happens is I'm going to take some wire over to here and just my finger touching these two spots will be enough electricity to turn this transistor on just a little bit. So a little bit of electricity comes out, the negative, and it's going to go to here. That little bit turns this one on a lot more. So then positive comes up here, which then it's going to have a light emitting diode, and then this will come back down to ground. So now every time you put your finger here, touching these two wires, that little bit of electricity that can go through your finger is enough to turn this transistor on pretty well and then that's going to be enough to turn this one on completely which is enough to light the LED and that is how the amulet is going to light up pretty smart huh And it's actually three AA batteries. And so now, but if I hold down, touch the positive, now it does it. That's what I want right there. Okay, I have some magnet wire. And I want to mark which side is negative. Okay, these are good and dry now. I'm going to have to be very careful. Otherwise, it'll chip and break off. And these wires here, these are going to have to poke in to the silicone. Try that. Okay. One 
one's poked in. Okay, I should be able to put the other one on top and nothing touch. I'd like to put the LED pointing a little bit more down. be using the smooth cast 325 as for colors I'm going to take a little bit of white just a little bit to make it a little bit opaque and then it's really hard to tell in the movie sometimes it looks completely clear sometimes it's yellow sometimes it's kind of an orangey color I'm going with an orangey yellow, you know, but very light. So here's some yellow. Actually, I think I'm going to go with that right there. <laughs> There's the two wires sticking out. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Okay, these wires, just going to trim them close. So I have this macrame cording. I use this a lot on different stuff and you can do all kinds of stuff with this. It's cotton so you can paint it and dye it or whatever and there's also a core so you can also remove the core which I have done and I put a piece of wire through there. That's not the wire I'm going to use for electrical. That's the wire I'm going to use to keep this from collapsing as I paint it because I already found out you need that. So I'm going with some Mod Podge. Brown acrylic paint.
and just a little bit of black. And just a tiny bit of water. Now with these pieces, I'm just going to use a powder pigment, it's just aluminum powder. Alright, using some of this onyx. Now I want to take my rope that's dry, cut it in half. Okay, now hopefully I can pull this through. CA glue into here. All right, here's the tricky part because I need to cut some of this off without cutting the wire. Okay, so this is going to be the positive down in here. Cool. Okay, that's going to work, so I'll finish this. I also drilled this out so it takes four of these little batteries now.
Well, if that's all the dragons that are left, I'm not wasting my amulet. Anyway, if you like this video, I sure would appreciate a big thumbs up. If you want to see more, of course, hit the subscribe button. I want to thank Dallas Puppet Theater for loaning me that dragon puppet. And I want to thank these people right here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out. I could not do any of this stuff without them, that's for sure. I want to thank them oh so very much. And if you'd like to join them, there are some perks, so check the link out below. And there's also a PayPal donation link if you want that. I'll help out that way as well. Anyway, that was my Dragon Slayer necklace. Thanks for watching.